Welcome to Friday Night Q&A. Brian, welcome again to our program this evening. Oh, praise the Lord. It's so much of a great blessing to be part of the program again. Uh, I know this is a subject that's not understood by most, so I'm looking forward to uh, learning uh, with our viewers what is God's uh, plan in terms of how he wants to save us. Okay. Uh, can you just pray for us before I introduce our subject this evening? Sure. Let us pray. Holy Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity to study your word again. Thank you for the blessings during this past week. We ask for the presence, the power and baptism of your Holy Spirit. May he guide us and lead us into all truth as we study this all important subject that Jesus said we should read and understand. Grant us that understanding as we read and help us, Lord, to be obedient to all your requirements. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So our question that we're going to answer this evening is, what is the abomination of desolation? Before mm. we delve into this topic, let's go to the scriptures and look at a verse where the Bible talks about this. So we're going to go to Matthew chapter 24 and verses 14 through 16. And it says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, so this is in context of the gospel going to the world, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. So the Bible says, the abomination of desolation needs to be understood in the context of the gospel going to the whole world, number one. Number two, you need to read the book of Daniel to understand it because Jesus said, when it happens, read the book of Daniel. And then it also talks about fleeing into the mountain. So once again, it has to do with the end of time. Or in this context, there are two applications. Now, Brian, firstly, this gospel of the kingdom going into all the world and the whole context of Matthew 24, what is the dual context of Matthew 24? Because the, the historical fulfillment will help us to better understand the prophetic fulfillment at the end of time. Right. That's so important to lay that foundation. And um, as we read from the spirit of prophecy, we are told that when Jesus spoke on Matthew 24, this prophecy had a dual application. So it was very pertinent and related to the time of the disciples and the apostolic church and what they would face. And it also was to be repeated at the end of time. Um, and it's interesting, Ranir, we find that um, when Jesus mentions this year, when you therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, let him who reads understand. And then um, it's in context of end time events. And uh, he says, those who are in the field, don't go back and get your coat. It's time for you to flee. If you're in the house, don't go. To, do, flee, flee, flee. So, so the context here is that in the eschatological end time setting, um, it would be an, another abomination of desolation. So when you think about Jesus speaks there, uh, we need to understand that he had been asked three questions by his disciples when he's giving this uh, discourse. And, and, and um, Bible scholars call Matthew 24 the little apocalypse because it deals with end time events. But Jesus' disciples tells them that, do you see this temple? Not one stone will be left here standing upon another. Now, it's, it's interesting that um, he says in Matthew chapter 24, I just want to get the context of this, Matthew chapter 23, uh, verses 38. Um, he's come, this is the Passion Week. Jesus is about to be sacrificed. And in verses 37, he's, he's on the Mount of Olives. He's looking down on the city of Jerusalem, and he, he's crying out for this generation. He says, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often I would have gathered you, uh, uh, gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered chickens, and you would not. 
And then he says in verse 38, Behold, your house is left unto you what? There's that word, desolate. So, so, so what is this desolation Jesus was speaking of? So th- this is, we're talking about the dual application of this prophecy. So, so when Jesus says to the disciples, you see this beautiful temple with these big, impressive marble stones and its gold glittered dome and all its impressive ceremonies. He says, not one stone will be left upon another. They were like shocked beyond degree. I mean, they thought, mm-hmm. okay, the temple will be destroyed. End of the world. It has to be end of the world. And then they asked Jesus the question in Matthew 24 verses 3. Tell us, when shall these things be? What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? You see, eschatological, end of the world, sign of your coming. And then Jesus tells him, take it, no man deceive you. He tells him, you'll hear of wars, rumors of war, earthquakes and pestilence, all those signs. And he says, many of you will be hated for my namesake and many will, of you will be killed, right? He's talking about to them. But when he comes to verse 14, he's, he's talking about the gospel will be preached through them after the day of Pentecost, but he's also talking of at the end of the world because it says this gospel should be preached as a witness to all nations and then the end will come. Mm. So when you look at the abomination of a desolation, I, I think we're probably going to have to probably carry on this to next week, but if you look at the abominations of Israel led to their desolation. So the temple was desolated in AD 70 by Titus, uh, the Roman general, right? So that was the fulfillment of that desolation. But you know, there are two desolations prior to that. You've got the desolation by Nebuchadnezzar in 586 BC of the temple then, Mm -hmm. right? It was rebuilt. And then Jesus said, it'll be desolated again, AD 70. And then of course, in the future, there's going to be the temple in heaven, that there's going to be a rival temple on this earth that will bring about a desolation. In other words, the abominations, all the sinful practices of Israel led to the abomination. So I'd like us to unpack it, Grenier, and I'd like us to look at um, how Daniel speaks of it, because yes. three times Daniel, Daniel chapter 8, uh, Daniel chapter 11, and Daniel chapter 12. He speaks of this abomination of desolation, which Jesus is talking about. But yes. remember, in Daniel's time, the temple had already been desolated by Nebuchadnezzar. And what was the reason? Jeremiah had told him in Jeremiah chapter 17, that if you will keep on breaking the Sabbath, God is going to send the king of Babylon and he's going to destroy this place. Did yes. they listen? Well, in Jeremiah chapter 20, 25, And then also in Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11, God said there would be a desolation by the king of Babylon for 70 years. And while the land lay desolate, in other words, the 70 years of captivity in Babylon, the land lay desolate. So what are we seeing? The abominations, the, the, the sins of Israel that led to the desolation of the sanctuary in 586 by Nebuchadnezzar, also was the abominations of Israel that led to the desolation of the sanctuary in 70 AD. And I'd like us to look at Ezekiel 11. Um, maybe you've got something you'd like to add now and take our viewers to, but if we look at Ezekiel chapter 8, mm. it speaks of the abominations yes. there. Um, and Ezekiel's been told by God, son of man, let me show you what my people are doing there in Israel. And he takes him to the temple. Mm. First of all, he sees people there that are offering sacrifices, polluted sacrifices. They've got idols there in the temple. And then God says, you think that's bad? You think that's a bad abomination? Let me show you a greater one. Then he takes them. There's women baking cakes to Tammuz. Hmm. And God says to him, Ezekiel, I'm going to show you even worse. And then he takes him and he looks to the hole. And then what does he see? 25 of the elders Hmm. with their backs to the temple and they are worshiping the sun in the east. Now, the temple was west facing, but they got their backs to the temple and they worshiping the sun in the east. And God says, this was the greatest of all abominations, the desecration of God's Sabbath, the desecration of God's temple, the desecration of the body, the, 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 the animals, mm. the food they were eating. So their abominations led to the desolation. So we need to look at the end time scenario. Yes. Uh, 
uh, and work out what's going to happen there. So, so let's stick with this, the, the original abomination of desolation, right. by giving the text. And then maybe next week we can jump into the, the end of time application okay. when we look at Babylon's abominations in a cup and how that right. will lead to the desolation of all those that drink and follow Babylon. But so let's that's look true. at the old, the, 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 the historical one that's already happened, but yet right. it was still prophetic for Jesus when he said it in Matthew 24. If we jump right. to Luke 21, 5 and 6, Luke 21, 5 Luke and 6. 21, yeah, that explains uh, Matthew yeah, 24, 15. Yes, it explains yes. it. So Luke 21, 5 and 6, it says, let me just click it correctly. There we go. Then as some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and donations, he said, these things which you see, the days will come in which not one stone shall be left one upon another that not shall not be thrown down. So this is mm -hmm. now the same thing that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24. Mm -hmm. But then right. Jesus explains it in Luke in a way that the wording gives us the exact thing that's going to happen. So let's right. jump to verse 20, 20. and 21. Mm -hmm. And he says, but when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then mm -hmm. let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her depart and let not those who are in the country enter her. So here's the same thing we read in Matthew 24, verse 15 and 16. Let's go That's back right. to it so that the viewers can just see that it's the same context, which says the abomination of desolation, let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. So mm -hmm. Luke's answer to this is when the Roman army surrounded Jerusalem, that was the sign for the people to flee into the mountains. Right. So the abomination of desolation historically was when Jerusalem was surrounded, AD 66, 67. It was surrounded. The Romans pulled back. The Israelites then went out and killed some of them and thought they had a great victory. But those who followed prophecy and was connected to God knew this was the sign to leave. They had three years to leave the city. And it's interesting that historically it tells us, historical records, that not a single Christian died when the Romans came back under Cestius and destroyed Jerusalem, not a single Christian died. The blood was running in the streets. It was terrible, this ordeal, that Jesus prophesied would happen. But the Christians did not die. Now I want to jump back to the context of what Brian so, so laid so well, and that was the abominations that Ezekiel pointed to in Ezekiel chapter 8 the things that was happening within Israel that led to the first desolation under Nebuchadnezzar. And then Ezekiel seeing it while Babylon is now reigning during the mm -hmm. 70 years that Daniel also spoke about that this will lead to this abomination of desolation in AD 70. And that is, if we go to Daniel chapter nine, right? We know this prophecy, this prophecy points to the fact that, the Messiah would come. But this prophecy also points to the abomination of desolation, that mm -hmm. this would follow the rejection of the Messiah by the Jews. If we go to Daniel, Daniel 24, 9, 24 talks about the 70 weeks are determined for your people, Daniel, that's Israel, your holy city, that's Jerusalem, to finish the transgressions, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, etc. They did not do this. The 70 weeks prophecy ended in AD 34. What would be the result of this rejection? We read verses 26 and 27. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. So the Messiah would die. And after that, the city and the sanctuary would be destroyed. And that happened in AD 70. The end of it shall be with a flood until the end of war. Desolations are determined. So here's the desolations. 
Verse 27. Then he shall confirm a covenant with me. So verse 27 is basically a repeat of verse 26. Then he shall confirm a covenant with them for one week, but in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. That's when the Messiah shall be cut off. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. So here in Daniel 9, it says, because of the rejection of Israel, of Jesus, Jesus will be cut off. He shall die in the middle of the week. And the ultimate result is desolations, abominations. The city will be destroyed and the sanctuary or the temple. So this was the historical abomination of desolation. But Brian, you mentioned another two places in Daniel. Would you like to so take us through those places, please? Yeah, sure. Just before we go there, I'd just like to point out to our viewers, sadly, the devil has tried to hijack verses 26 and 27 yes. and apply it to the Antichrist mm. when the text is talking about the Christ. Exactly. And, uh, and, and the fact that uh, he is cut off, as you said, not for himself, but for the people. And of course, when it says, and the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city, that's talking about Titus. Because when Cestius came the first time, AD 66, he just pulled off without any explanation. And then there was an opportunity for those in the city to leave and flee, like you said. When Titus came back and the siege held, more than 2 million people, Josephus says, was destroyed in the city. So the problem is they did not believe in prophecy. And that's why they were lost. Those who believed in the prophecy that Jesus gave, when they saw the sign of the Roman army surround, they left. Yes. But the point I'd like to, to raise here, Renier, is that Titus destroys the city. And in fact, the historian Josephus says he did not want to destroy the temple. Mm -hmm. He did all he could to actually save the temple because Rome had invested lots of money to build their temple through Herod. And it was the pride of the nation and was actually the pride of Rome. And they were controlling, of course, Palestine. And, and he did everything in his power. But there was an ominous hand that allowed the events to so overrule that his soldiers got so fed up with the Jews and went in the temple and tried to hide in the temple. One of them threw a firebrand and of course the temple was destroyed. And of course, after that, Ellen White says, angels actually pushed over those big marble stones and mm -hmm. there was not one left upon another. So the temple was desolated or destroyed. A good word we can use for desolate is destroyed. So it was destroyed. Um, but let's go to Daniel chapter 11 verses 31. And we see... Uh, what is said there, Renier. And here now, it's speaking of a future desolation. Um, end time, eschatological. Right, so, uh, and, and to know who it's talking about, it's talking here about this power who is referred to as the king of the north. Now, perhaps we'll do a study in a, in a future time about yes. who the king of the north is. But, but very clearly, as you studied in Daniel chapter 11, it's speaking none other than the Roman state church controlled by the papacy. Yes. It's very, very clear you study that. Um, so it says in verses 31 here, an arm shall stand on his part and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily. Now the word sacrifice is added. That's why it's in italics. Um, and they, that's speaking of this little horn, it's speaking about this power that is going to pollute the sanctuary. They shall place the abomination that maketh desolation. So very clearly, the abominations or the transgressions of the church, the disobedience of this state church will lead people to worship God, not in spirit and truth. Mm. But Jesus, remember, Jesus said in Matthew 24, three times, he said, take heed that no one deceive you. Many shall come in my name and say that they are Christ, but don't believe them. And finally, verse 24, he says, they shall come in my name and if possible, will deceive the very elect. So what is this problem here? What is the daily, Renier? The daily represents the intercession of the priest in place of, in this church, in place of Jesus Christ, the high priest. In other words, it is the substitution of God's truth 
by the abominations of which we read in Revelation chapter 14, this cup that you mentioned full of abominations, which leads people to worship God in falseness. And that is the abominations that makes desolate. And then there's one more time here in uh, chapter 12, and it's in verses, chapter 12, verses 11. Again, it refers to daily sacrifice. And from the time that the daily sacrifice again is added, shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolation set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. So there's a time prophecy. And mm -hmm. as we look at this time prophecy, the one thousand two hundred and ninety days, inside of that is the one thousand two hundred and sixty days, mm -hmm. which is when this papal power will replace God's sanctuary with an earthly sanctuary and set up abominations that you can go to a priest and have your sins forgiven, you don't have to go to mm. Jesus Christ. That's an abomination. You can come to the mass and the mass people don't understand is an abomination. It, it is what they call transubstantiation when the priest prays over the round wafer, which actually is a symbol of the sun disk, and he prays over the wine, which is actually fermented wine, which is not used in the sanctuary at all. The blood, the wine becomes the actual blood and the wafer or the bread becomes the actual body of Jesus Christ. Now, yes. now the priest has power to create Christ and worse still, they sacrifice him again and, and again. again and again. Here the Bible says Christ was sacrificed once for all and he's the son of God. So, so these are the abominations of this power that are set up hmm. and the people who accept this false worship and come under its power, they will also be set up for this desolation when God will destroy all those who have drank of the wine, of the cup, of the wrath of his fornication. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot we can unpack here, Renita. I know it's a bit much for all our viewers now. Perhaps we can yes. take it in bite chunks uh, later on, but that's yeah. basically what Daniel says. He speaks of what happened during his time mm -hmm. when the sanctuary was desolate. I mean, chapter one speaks of the fact that Jehoiakim was overcome and Daniel comes. And of course, this is Babylon now ruling, little Babylon. Mm -hmm. But we find as there was a desolation of the sanctuary by little Babylon, in the end time, there'll be a desolation of the sanctuary by mystical or spiritual Babylon. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what Jesus warned about both when he said, we need to read Daniel because Daniel explains what happens. And if we understand that, we will be saved from the deceptions of this power. So basically, what, this is what we're going to do next week. So as, as the program continued, I, I see now what we need to do next week. So basically, okay. the abomination of desolation, historically, what Jesus was talking about in Matthew 24 was the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, right. as you say, by Titus. I said Cestius earlier, sorry, Cestius was the first siege, and then Titus, the second one. Then... The abomination of desolation under the papacy was set up during the dark ages when right. God's sanctuary was trampled underfoot. And that's what we're going to look at next week. What has she brought in? And then the week after, we will look at what does this have to do with the end of time just before Jesus comes? Right. How will this abomination of desolation then be enforced, etc.? Okay. And there are clues. There are clues already. Even in the Roman armies around Jerusalem, they had eagles as standards looking to the right or to the left. Mm. I can't remember which way now. But an eagle turning its face to the side was their standards. So all of this is right. going to point to the end of time, what is rightly important. And as we read in Matthew 24, and this is what I want to end with, Jesus said, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the world and then the end shall come. And then it talks about the abomination of desolation. And some people might ask, but yeah, how did the abomination of desolation, when that came in AD 70, how was the gospel preached into all the world? I want to end with this text as encouragement. Yes. Colossians 1.23, it says, If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of right. which... I, Paul, became a minister. Amen. The gospel went to all the world, and then the abomination of desolation was set up, and Jerusalem was destroyed. 
the gospel went under um, went to the world uh, will go to the world at the end of time and the abomination of desolation will come in force again brian right. thank you for your time thank you for the explanation for the viewers next week we will look at part two of the abomination of desolation what did the papacy set up maybe we should actually look at the king of the north first to explain that that is the context of daniel 11 before right. we jump into what happened during the dark ages if you have not okay. subscribed yet to our channel subscribe and you'll be notified every time we upload new videos. May God bless you as we end off in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you for truth. I pray, Father, that you will explain and help us to understand more as we continue in these studies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.